<laughs> All right. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? How you doing today? Hope everybody's doing fantastic. It's a beautiful day here where I am. The sun's shining. The winds are blowing. Not too hard, though. Just a nice breeze. And it is Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. We missed Tuesday, but maybe we'll make it Thursday. Wednesday, though, Wisdom of the Ages from Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. This is my birthday week. It'll be my birthday tomorrow. So I thought possibly I'll do the Tuesday Dow on Thursday this time. It'll be a special birthday broadcast. Maybe. We'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow. <laughs> Giving myself some leeway here this week and also went to the renaissance festival everybody that's ever been to the renaissance festival no matter what state you're in let me know in the comments below because that's something i always love to attend each year the colorado renaissance festival but wherever you are and so also my sister was married just a few days ago i believe on monday so it's been an interesting week, ladies and gentlemen. I was considering taking the week off, but here I am, and here we are. And so it is right now. You don't have to think about it anywhere else. It is right now, right here. Soul love is what Wayne Dyer's chapter is titled here today. And there's a couple of poems here. One is When You Are Old, after Pierre de Ronsard. And then the other one is for Anne Gregory from William Butler Yeats. And William Butler Yeats is an Irish poet and dramatist. William Yeats is generally considered one of the greatest poets of the 20th century. He lived 1865 to 1939, or 865 to 939, depending which version of reality we're in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you'll you'll know what i mean there if you research certain subjects all right so let's dive right into soul love and when you are old after pierre de ronsard it begins when you are old and gray and full of sleep and nodding by the fire take down this book and slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once and of their shadows deep. How many, how many loved your moments of glad grace and loved your beauty with love false or true? But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you and loved the sorrows of your changing face. And bending down beside the glowing bars, murmur a little sadly how love fled and paced up the mountains overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars. And so the next one is titled For Anne Gregory. So, and it's interesting, William Butler Yeats being one of the greatest poets, quote unquote, of the 20th century, I've heard quite a few of his poems come up over the times and they're always very powerful. That one there, after Pierre de Ronsard, was um, was a bit to think about. Had an interesting pace to it. Anyways, let's go right into this next one here. For Anne Gregory. Never shall a young man throw into despair by those great honey-colored ramparts of your ear. Love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. But I can get a hair dye and set such color there, brown or black or carrot, that young men in despair, interesting, may love me for myself alone and not my yellow hair. I heard an old religious man, but yesternight declare that he had found a text to prove that only God, my dear, could love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. William Butler Yeats. Fascinating. And, you know, normally I'll give a little commentary on my ideas about these, but these ones are kind of out of my realm, out of my wheelhouse a little bit. But I just wanted to get this in today so I didn't 
leave you hanging, ladies and gentlemen. So let's dive right into what Dr. Wayne Dyer has to say about this subject of soul love, dealing with these two poems that we just read. Because he always goes a direction that I don't expect, and it's always fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. William Butler Yeats was a fascinating visionary, Wayne Dyer begins, who sought wisdom and brotherhood through mysticism and loved to write of the soul's cry for release from the material world of circumstance. Isn't that a deep sentence? <laughs> Indisputably, one of the most significant modern poets and renowned as a dramatist, Yeats was an Irish national politician when Ireland became a free state in 1922, and he received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1923. He was consumed by his interest in the occult and magic, as well as the sinister forces that seemed to be drawing the world toward a cataclysmic battle of good versus evil. He died shortly before the outbreak of World War II. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that's fascinating. He sounds like a very interesting gentleman. He was consumed by his interest in the occult and magic, as well as the sinister forces that seem to be drawing the world towards a battle of good versus evil. I like this guy. Now that he's a... Um, you know, the, the ideas of someone, a visionary who sought wisdom and brotherhood through mysticism and loved to write of the soul's cry for release from this material world of circumstance and yet was also consumed by his interest in the occult and magic. This guy was pretty fascinating in my point of view, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> In addition to writing of Ireland, Yeats wrote of a love that transcended preoccupation with physical beauty. He had fallen in love with Maud Gone, if that's how you pronounce that correctly. It's M-A-U-D-G-O-N-N-E, -N -N -E, an Irish beauty who was also brilliant and a rebel and whose passion was lavished on Ireland. She rejected Yeats' overtures and refused his proposal of marriage. Wow. Interestingly, Maud's daughter also later rejected his proposal of marriage. <laughs> he had many loves, but was not married until the age of 52. Two selections, the two selections here represent his poetic embrace of love that inspired by that is inspired by more than a physical attraction. In 19 1907, Yeats had traveled through Italy with Anne Gregory, a beautiful woman with golden hair. He writes to her that only God, my dear, could love you for yourself alone and not your golden hair. The same theme appears in When You Are Old. How many loved your moments of glad grace and loved your beauty with love false or true? But one man loved the pilgrim soul in you and loved the sorrows of your changing face. Here he says to you and me that the truest test of love has nothing to do with appearances. And though I admire your outward beauty, I urge you to love as God does for yourself alone. Deep ideas, ladies and gentlemen, but this is going past the ideas of conditional love or physical love and going to a deeper, more non-physical connection. One of my most memorable moments, Wayne Dyer continues, as a doctoral student in the 1960s occurred during a seminar, an advanced course on counseling psychology taught by the most pre prestigious professor at the university. I, Wayne Dyer, along with 11 others, studied the research and conclusions on self-actualization, which is one of my favorite subjects, ladies and gentlemen, in including the specific characteristics of highly functioning people. These exceptional people, some of them historical figures, were called self-actualizers. 
The purpose of this advanced seminar was to teach us how to identify these traits and to help others embrace them to live a fuller and more deeply passionate life. That's amazing. That's part of my purpose here. Maybe not so much on the love forefront, but to help identify these traits that creates these exceptional people, these highly functioning people, these self-actualizers, and then begin to create that in our own selves, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can embrace these traits or characteristics that create these high functioning self-actualizing individuals who live at a higher quality of life. And the, the, then we can not only understand and identify those and begin to embrace them so that we can live fuller and more deeply passionate lives, ladies and gentlemen. Wayne Dyer continues, the traits of these self-actualizers included appreciation for beauty. So number one, write that down. A high functioning self-actualizing individual has an appreciation for beauty. Number two, they have a sense of purpose. Number three, resistance to enculturation. That's a powerful one there. Become unindoctrinated, ladies and gentlemen. Resistance to enculturation. Number four, they welcome the unknown. Welcoming the unknown. Being willing, maybe. Number five, they have a high enthusiasm. They are enthusiastic about the things in their lives. Number six, they have an inner directedness. They are inner directed people. Number seven, detachment from outcome. We've talked about that before. That's one of the three things I always said that makes up a self-actualizing individual. I didn't know that this there was this greater list. I've heard Wayne Dyer, I've heard Wayne Dyer talk about these things before, but I've never had this list right here in front of me, so it's so good. I'll come back to this with my uh, highlighter and make a little bookmark here about self-actualization but so once again we'll go through them self-actualizers included these traits and these characteristics of these self-actualizers included number one appreciation for beauty number two a sense of purpose three resistance to enculturation four welcoming the unknown five they have a high enthusiasm six they were inner directed or they have an inner directedness. Seven, they are detached from the outcome. Eight, they're independent of the good opinion of others. And absence of a compelling need to exert control over others. So they have no investment in power over other people. That is number nine. And and absence of a compelling need to exert control over others. That's an interesting way to phrase it, ladies and gentlemen. Each week, we discuss the strategies we could employ as therapists. I would love to do that as a living. Isn't that weird how you end up on this random path that you're on in your life and wonder? <laughs> you wonder, you read sentences like that, and you're like, man, that's that sounds fun. Fantastic. Most people think of that like, oh, goodness, got to go to school and learn all these things. I'm like, that sounds amazing. And so anyway, sorry, in absence of uh, each week, he says, we discuss these strategies. We could employ as therapists to encourage clients to become self-actualized. See, that's the key. That is what I'm doing here is I'm encouraging you, ladies and gentlemen, and myself through these great wisdom of the ages, these traits of self-actualizing individuals, and through the wisdom of the Tao, which includes all of this, so that we can become self-actualizing individuals, so that we can create a higher quality of life, in not only our own lives, but in the lives of those around us, ladies and gentlemen. So, 
the, and it's like you were saying, each week we discuss these strategies we could employ as therapists to encourage clients to become self-actualized. At the halfway point, too bad I don't have clients for all this. <laughs> then I wouldn't have to work. I also worked yesterday, so that might be part of the reason I missed the Tuesday Dow as well. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, clients, that would be fantastic. I hope all of you out there that have your own personal practice have clients, have a wonderful amount of clients and have wonderful clients themselves that make you enjoy the work that it is you do. At the halfway point of the semester, Wayne Dyer continues, our distinguished professor gave the midterm examination which consisted of only the following question. This is awesome. <laughs> I remember this one from his lectures. A self-actualized person arrives at a dinner party at which everyone is dressed in formal attire. He is wearing blue jeans, a t-shirt and sneakers and a baseball hat. What does he do? You have 30 minutes to write your answer. All 12 of us wrote furiously for the next half hour, and then we were each asked to read our responses aloud. And I can imagine Wayne Dyer, a doctoral student, along with these other doctoral students in this class. And they're like, all right, we have all these reference books and all this different stuff that we've been going through and working on. And so you can imagine all the things that they wrote down, thinking how great and how, uh, you know, Amazing, their answers were going to be when the teacher came back. <laughs> and so, uh, blah, 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 blah. all 12 of us wrote furiously for the next half hour. And then we were each asked to read our responses aloud. Some of the responses Wayne Dyer says he remembers were, he wouldn't pay attention to those appearances. He would leave or make excuses. He wouldn't leave or make excuses. He would just act as if nothing were amiss. He would just go on and enjoy the gathering and not worry about how others perceived him. See, these are all people that are, you know, believe they have an understanding of what a self-actualizing individual would do in this situation. Wayne Dyer says, I remember feeling particularly proud of my answer with dealt with, which dealt with his feeling of purpose and a higher mission. And these are all great characteristics. When all of us had finished reading our answers, Wayne says, our professor, our professor said, I'm sorry, but you have all failed the midterm exam. You only needed to write three words. And he proceeded to put the three words on the chalkboard. Now, take a moment to think for yourself, ladies and gentlemen, if you've been following along, hopefully you have. What do you think those three words are? It's very simple. I'll go back and read the question again. A self-actualized person arrives at a dinner party at which everybody is dressed in formal attire and this self-actualizing person is only wearing blue jeans, t-shirt, sneakers, and a baseball hat. So what does he do? Being a self-actualized individual. And so... The professor said, I'm sorry you failed a minute. You only needed three words. Those three words on the chalkboard, ladies and gentlemen, was or were, he wouldn't notice. He wouldn't notice. Now that is a different level to get to, ladies and gentlemen. See, this went a whole totally different direction than I thought it would be. We're talking about soul love. But... <clears throat> He wouldn't even notice that everybody else is dressed in formal attire and that he is not. He is independent of the good opinion of other people. He's on purpose. You know, all of these great things that everybody was saying leads up to he wouldn't even notice or he wouldn't notice going with three words. I like putting even in there. It makes it four words. He wouldn't even notice that everybody else is all formal and he's not. The highest level of awareness, Wayne Dyer continues, is one in which the self-actualized person does not notice appearances. Ah, that's where this goes back to. It's talking about soul love, not physical appearances and love that comes from that.
right? So this highest level of awareness is one in which the self-actualized person does not notice appearances, living from the soul, maybe your, your spirit, your higher self, and sees only the unfolding of God in each person encountered. And that's something we talked about last week, ladies and gentlemen. It is this kind of love that William Butler Yeats writes of in these two selections that we read in the beginning. What a challenge, ladies and gentlemen, to look past what we see with our eyes and to feel total affection for the soul rather than the physical appearance. What a challenge in a society where we are bombarded with advertising propaganda designed to sell us products that are almost exclusively about improving physical appearances. In this mindset, wrinkles must be hidden or better yet removed from surgical procedures or by surgical procedures. Silver hair must be disguised and all signs of a natural aging process must be concealed. It's funny, I looked back at one of my, I looked back at one of my videos from like a couple of years ago and I noticed I had really gray hair right down here. You get the I don't know if it was the lighting in my car at the time or if I was going through a lot of stress at the time. I'm like, I'm not old at all, ladies and gentlemen, but I did notice more see maybe right there. I did notice a little bit of gray back then as compared to the clearly anyways sorry getting off subject there <laughs> that's what happens when you have an image of yourself in reverse in front of you ladies and gentlemen and then you're talking about physical appearances and so but i did think that was odd because I, I you know it's is it possible to get gray hair when you're young from stressful situations that's a good question that's a question save for another day ladies and gentlemen now continuing uh talking about the propaganda Designed to sell us products, improving our physical appearances. Hide the wrinkles, better not. You know, silver hair must be disguised, and all signs of the natural aging process must be concealed. Rather than appreciated, ladies and gentlemen, I think we should appreciate it. What do you think? Wayne Dyer continues, Yates asks us to look beyond, beyond those advertising messages to love in a godlike way that has nothing to do with outward appearances. To literally not notice superficial characteristics. We all had this ability at one time in the past. There was a time when we didn't notice the color of the skin or the shape of the playmate's eyes. When the conditioning process of our culture took over, we began to identify more on the basis of the appearance of the container than on the soul inside of the package. And, you know, this is one of the things that Wayne Dyer references in his speeches, talking about the soul and how, you know, the importance of what is inside the package. And he used the analogy of food products in a grocery store. He goes, you go and everything's packaged up and they have these beautiful pictures on the outside of the packages. But you wouldn't eat the package, now would you, ladies and gentlemen? Because that's not the real thing. It might look good, or it might look bad on the outside, but it's what's on the inside that counts. And if you're using, using this metaphor of food and packaging, then if you eat the package, you will not get nourishment. If you eat what is on the inside, or if you appreciate and notice, you know, pay um, recognition or give the greater respect to that which is on the inside instead of the package on the outside. <clears throat> Four of the most powerful lines of poetry I've ever read, Wayne Dyer says, are my favorite Yeats poems. Sailing to Byzantium. An aged man is but a poultry thing. Paltry, he says, not poultry, not like chicken. <laughs> An aged man is but a paltry thing, a tattered coat upon a stick, unless soul clap its hands and sing and louder sing, for every tatter 
in its mortal dress. That's a beautiful one, ladies and gentlemen, talking about that difference between what is on the outside and what is on the inside. As physical beings, Wayne Dyer continues, we are all eventually heading towards being a tattered coat upon a stick. If we love only for what we observe with our senses, that becomes a paltry thing indeed. But when the soul claps its hands and sings, and louder sings, the aging part becomes insignificant, ladies and gentlemen. Yeats asks you, and me, and all of us, to first look beyond the superficial, and then when this becomes your self-actualized way of being, to those you love, wait, no, sorry, I skipped a line. When this becomes your self-actualized way of being, to get to the point where you don't even notice, where you don't even notice, ladies and gentlemen. Going back to that idea about the dinner party, he wouldn't even notice. Let the soul of those you love receive your attention. The soul of those you love. The body is just a garage, it's just a package. And it's not the real thing that gives you sustenance. And so let the soul of those you love receive your attention. And while you're at it, do yourself a favor and let your own soul clap its hands and receive your applause, ladies and gentlemen. Love yourself as God does, as the universe does, as Tao does, whatever you want to call it, great spirit. Love yourself as God does for yourself alone. And so here are some suggestions for adopting this kind of love into your life. And this is why you want to get this book for yourself, to have it on your own bookshelf, because everyone needs a shelf for themselves, full of beautiful, wonderful reference material, just like this. And so I have this book linked in the description. I'm pointing... Uh, Right where the expansion button is for the description, I believe, underneath the video so that you can see the links I have so that you can get this for yourself, ladies and gentlemen, because Wayne Dyer always gives us some practical ways that we can apply this wisdom of the ages into our lives. Practical. So here are some suggestions. How we can adopt this new kind of love, this soul love, going beyond the physical appearances. Number one, begin to see yourself as a soul with a body rather than a body with a soul. Look at those indicators of aging as merit badges and try to look past them into the part of yourself that has never aged and never will. Number two, ignore the incessant propaganda that bombards your consciousness each day, encouraging you to hang on to eternal youth and judge yourself and others on the basis of your appearances only. Be proud of yourself, not only for how you look, but for the content of your character. Repeat often the famous phrase from La Queja Folies, I am what I am. Number three, when meeting others, see first the unfolding of God in those people and resist the temptation to talk about the superficial traits that you've been trained to focus on, that we've all been trained to focus on, the physical, ladies and gentlemen, as compared to the non-physical. Simply comment on others on the basis of their inner beauty and refuse to partake of the gossip that emphasizes appearances. This might be a challenge, but we can do it, ladies and gentlemen. Challenge accepted. Number four. When telling the persons that you love of your feelings, emphasize what you truly love about them rather than how they happen to look. Talk to their eternal soul rather than the garage that houses it. Boom. Boom to knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. Boom to wisdom. And a boom to soul love. That was interesting. That was a three-pager. 
Wow. I didn't expect that, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, last week was inspiration. That was so good, Rudyard Kipling. That was also wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. I, I never expected to go the direction it goes. And so it's always a surprise for me. I hope you really enjoyed that one, because I did. And next Wednesday is titled Highest Self. And see, I think this one here today, the soul love, was talking about connecting to our highest self and seeing those we love and ourselves from a new soul perspective, from a higher perspective beyond that of just the physical realm. So, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you get value from these. And if you do, consider subscribing. Continue, ladies and gentlemen, to seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment. Continue to seek to discover the wisdom of the ages. And continue to make happiness the way, ladies and gentlemen, the activity that we bring to life. Because in the goal that we've been seeking, we always tell ourselves, I'll be happy when I get there, will become irrelevant because we'll already be happy. And then the entire journey to wherever it is we're going will be wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you so much. And I hope this was a wonderful sentiment on a truer form of love rather than just physical attraction. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I love you all. And I'll be back maybe tomorrow for a birthday edition of the Chase Corrington YouTube channel and maybe the Dow. But we'll see what we do, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know if you liked the little short video I put out the other day, because I can do a lot more of those. I just take, you know, a few moments from these longer videos that I think are great moments that can maybe be an, um, an introductory, a gateway, so to speak, that can lead to maybe more people joining us here on these longer form videos. But anyways... Once again, love you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate everybody that spends time with me, Dr. Wayne Dyer, and all the wonderful authors and poets, the wisdom of the ages, as well as Lao Tzu and the wisdom of the Tao. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay frosty. No, no, no.